Okay, so we're gonna talk about solving equations with variables on both sides. This happens when you have one variable on one side of the equation and you have another variable on the other side of the equation. Now, there are many ways to answer these types of questions, but I want your priority to always be to combine your variables right away. This equation looks harder because there is a variable on both sides, but with one move, we can make it look like a regular two-step equation that we've been solving for a while now. Some of you in class may remember the may remember the Newton chicken method. The Newton chicken method tells us if you if you're on a farm and you're chasing chickens, you hate trying to chase two chickens at once. It's hard to catch them. So what you do is you take those chickens, you shove them together into a mutant chicken, so now you only have one chicken to chase. That sounds kind of goofy, but hopefully that helps you remember your goal is to always combine your chickens at, at the same time, at, at first, the first step, meaning in this case our variables. Our variable is m, so, so the first thing we're going to do is combine m. So to help you remember, the mutant chicken method priority always tells us this. Move your variables to one side first. Now, if you do that, you should always move the smaller one towards the bigger one. So by moving the smaller one towards the bigger one. So let's see, in our example, our two variables are 2 fourths m, positive 2 fourths m, and positive 3 fourths m. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the smaller one towards the bigger one. If you do this, you will avoid having a negative coefficient. If you can avoid having a negative coefficient, you will save yourself up to one step at the end of your equation. So if you always move towards your bigger one, you will avoid a negative coefficient. So let's see, positive 2 fourths m and positive 3 fourths m. The smaller one is 2 fourths m. It's positive 2 fourths m. There's nothing in front of it. So to move it, you think of it as what is the opposite of positive 2 fourths m? And the opposite of that is negative 2 fourths m. Negative 2 fourths m can also be thought of subtract 2 fourths m. And remember, if you do it to one side of the equation, you must do it to the other side of the equation as well. Always remember, you can do whatever you want to an equation as long as you do the same thing to both sides. So on the left side, those cancel. And so we're left with just 5. So we got 5 equals. On the right side, we've got 3 fourths m minus 2 fourths m. Those are like terms. They both have m, so we just add or subtract the coefficients. So 3 fourths minus 2 fourths, that gives us 1 fourth. So we have 1 fourth m minus 4. Drop down the minus 4, it just, it's left over. So as of right now, you have an equivalent equation to the original. The original equation had lots of stuff going on, but by doing one thing to both sides, what we did to both sides was we subtracted 2 fourths m on both sides. By doing that, you now have an equivalent equation. You know it's an equivalent equation because you've used one of your properties of equality. Remember, those properties of equality are a fancy way of saying you did the same thing to both sides. So let's see, we now have a two-step equation. 5 equals 1 fourth times m minus 4. That is a two-step equation for us to solve. So you solve two-step equations by doing the order of operations in reverse. That's what we learned in our last video and in class. So order of operations in reverse. So let's see. I see times one-fourth and I see minus four. So going backwards in the order of operation, subtraction comes after multiply. So that means we gotta move it before we move the multiply. So to move subtract four, we know the inverse operation or the opposite operation. The operation that will undo minus four is add four. So add four to both sides. On the right side, they cancel. And so we're left with 1 fourth m on the right side. And on the left side, 5 plus 4 gives us 9. So we're now down to a one-step equation. At this step, I, I, we still have some classmates that are having trouble with how to get rid of a fraction coefficient. They're able to do it with whole numbers, but when they see a fraction, they get, they get confused. Here's what you got to remember. To get rid of any coefficient, 1 fourth m right here. 1 fourth m, right in there. When they're touching like that, that means multiply when they're touching. So to undo multiply, you have to divide. The inverse operation of multiply is divide. So remember, you get rid of all coefficients by dividing both sides by the coefficient. Now, someday you may be able to jump straight to knowing what this means, how to divide by a fraction, but until then, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with showing this step. 
So those are the opposites of each other. Times one fourth and divided by one fourth, they undo each other. Let's say I was the number two, and that was, and those were threes times three and divided by three. If I'm the number two and you multiply me by three, I equal six. If you divide me by three, I'm back at the two where I started, so I didn't go anywhere. So there's no point in doing it. So that's what happens to those. Another way of thinking about it is when you times by one fourth and you divide by one fourth. Anything divided by itself, so one fourth divided by one fourth is just one, and then one times m is just m. Those are many ways of saying the same thing. So if you want to keep it simple, say the inverse operation of multiply is divide. You'll do that to both sides, and then your coefficients will cancel out. Okay, so now over here we have nine divided by one fourth. You got to remember, in order to do that, you've got to do nine needs a denominator. And if your number does not have a denominator, you could always make it a one. So that's nine over one. Here's the part where you gotta remember how to divide by a fraction. So you're using your fraction skills we learned later in chapter two. When you divide by a fraction, we talked about it, you multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. Some of you know this as keep change flip. Whatever works for you to help you keep track of it, that is fine with me. So if you do that, when you multiply fractions, your fraction skills tell you multiply straight across. So on the top, we got nine times four, that gives us 36. And on the bottom, we have 1 times 1, which is just 1. So we have 36 over 1 equals m. So that tells us 36 over 1 simplifies to just 36. So that tells us m equals 36. And that's your final answer, your final solution to this equation. 36 is the solution of the equation, meaning when m is 36, this equation is true. Maybe you don't believe it. Maybe you need proof. Or maybe you're just not confident and you try to question like this on your own. Anytime you solve any equation, this is true for linear equations, quadratic equations, rational equations, any kind of equations that you'll encounter later in life and, and in middle school, you're always going to, need, you should always, if you want to be sure, plug in your answer and see if it gives you a true statement. So let's see, to plug in your answer, you're going to rewrite the original question. So let's see, two-fourths, instead of M, we're going to put a blank parenthesis. We're going to fill that in with our answer. Plus five equals... 3 over 4 times blank parenthesis. We'll make that a 36 in a minute, minus 4. So notice, I've written the original equation again, but all I've done is instead of the, uh, the, the, our variable being m, we're going to replace it with what we think our answer was. We feel our answer is 36. Maybe we're at home practicing. We want to know confidently, is the answer 36? Well, maybe we're not sure. So what your job is, you've got to see if this is true. You've got to go ahead and see if your left side does equal your right side. So remember the human equation we did, okay? When we did human equations in class, we knew if as long as we had the same amount of people on both sides of our equation, it was still true. We're about to check that right now. We're gonna find out, are there the same value on both sides of the equation? So let's see, on the left side, we got 2 fourths times 36 plus five. Order of operation, we gotta multiply before we add five. 2 fourths is just two over four. So over here on the side, I'm gonna do two over four, we're gonna multiply by 36. We need a denominator, so we're gonna make it a one. So 36 has a denominator of one, so we're gonna go ahead, now we're ready to multiply. Some of you may remember your shortcuts with multiplying fractions, so, so for the sake of time, we're gonna use our shortcut. This is that cross simplifying, or cross canceling, or diagonally simplifying, whatever you wanna call it. It's a shortcut when dividing a fraction. So let's see, the shortcut works like this. You know that four goes into four one time, you know that four goes into 36 nine times. So 4 became a 1, and 36 became a 9. Now if you multiply that, you end up with 2 times 9 is 18. 1 times 1 is 1. So you have 18 over 1, which is just 18. So that tells you over here, you've got 18 plus 5 now. Okay? So now, on the right side, we've got 3 fourths times 36. Same, same deal. We're going to show our work over here. So let's see. 3 fourths times 36 over 1. Go ahead and use our shortcut. We just found out that, that we know that 4 becomes a 1, 36 becomes a 9. So now we multiply. And if we do that, we get 3 times 9 is 27 over 1. So 27 over 1 is just 27. So that gives us 27 minus 4 on that side. So now your job is to see what each side equals. So let's see, on the left side, we have 18 plus 5. Okay, well, 18 plus 5, that's 23. So we have 23, drop down equal sign. On the right side, we have 27 minus 4. That gives us 23. Okay, drop it down. 
Now, I said 27 minus 4 equals 23. I didn't just say that because the other side said 23. You never assume. You should actually check. So let's see. On both sides, we have 23 equals 23. You ask yourself, is that a true statement? Well, we all know that 23, of course, is equal to 23. So that tells you that is most definitely the uh, cr cr true statement, which tells you 36 is the correct solution to your problem. So remember, when you're solving equations with variables on both sides, whether there are fractions or not, you always move your variables toward the bigger variable okay, by moving the smaller one. So if one of them is negative, one of them is positive, the smaller one is obviously the negative one. And once you think you have your answer, once you turn it into a two-step equation, so let's see, at this step we had a two-step equation, then your job is just to get away from M, doing order of operations in reverse. Now, once you have your solution down here, you take your solution and you should check it. That way you know with confidence, 100% are you doing it correctly. Because remember, when you practice guys, you shouldn't just practice like, oh, I tried that problem. No, no, you always should practice with purpose. Meaning you practice knowing immediately afterwards, are you doing it correctly, yes or no. That way when you get ready for a test or a quiz, you always can rely on, I know what I practiced at home was correct, so I can trust it when I did. That way you don't second guess yourself. I hope this helped guys, take care. I would like to